The second stream focuses on a very interesting topic, very hot at the moment, software dependencies. On the software dependency side, good means the following things. We are assessing dependencies for every application. Those dependencies are being checked for known vulnerabilities. As developers are making changes, they might be changing the dependencies. And as time goes by, there might be new vulnerabilities reported. Software composition analysis is not something you can do once, even if there are no code changes. As a minimum, you want the tool to be checking every time the vulnerability database gets updated. You could have a situation where SCA is running weekly against code that isn't being changed. And your tool might also report on new vulnerabilities automatically. Now, another big risk is license risk. For private companies, one of the biggest risks is actually the hidden clauses in some licenses that could say that if you use a certain library, your code becomes open source. So you want to be checking for copyleft licenses. I'm aware of certain licenses that say the minute you use this library in your project, your project becomes open source. Finally, the last part is focused on being more proactive instead of knowing what you're using and whether there are vulnerable dependencies. We switch to a nice listing approach that says, here are the things you're allowed to use. If it hasn't gone through an approval process and gotten on this list, you can't use it. Your build will then simply fail. And here is an example how you could do that. Now, the release build would allow only dependencies from a locked mirror repository. And to get something into the mirror repository, it has to go through an approval process. That means that development teams are still free to introduce dependencies during dev and testing. But during the release build, they have to make sure those dependencies are approved and of course, found in that mirror repository. Failing the build is then actually fairly easy because the moment the dependency was not found in that mirror repository, the build would simply fail with an error message saying cannot find a dependency. That's a really nice way of enforcing this instead of looking into complicated tooling. At level one, the question is whether you know the dependencies yet that you are using. Whether you are building a bill of materials or a dependency tree for each of the applications. Once you have those, do you have at least some mechanism to assess those for vulnerabilities? And when you go, uh, when you got findings, you at least look at them from time to time say, at least once in three months. Note that at level one, this could be something manual, although I would not really recommend for that, but you could put a junior developer to look at things once a week or once a month. When you get to level two, you need to have a more formal process around dependency management. The quality criteria include having an approved list of dependencies nice list dependencies that you can use. You need to evaluate all dependencies against new vulnerabilities and you need, need to also detect and alert license changes. It is a good idea to also make sure that you track dependencies that are no longer maintained so they might go stale and you might need to revisit them and change to a new component that is maintained. Note that modern software composition analysis tooling is really strong when it comes to many of these criteria. Finally, you want to make sure that you're not carrying dependencies along in your build artifacts that aren't even being used. 
For instance, you might have included a dependency that you needed some time ago, but you don't need it any longer. The application still builds, so nothing breaks, but it is a good idea for teams to check and perhaps use some runtime coverage analysis tools to determine whether this should be there at all. This is a hygiene activity that typically gets missed. At level three, this is the point where we are going to say, hey, your application contains known vulnerable dependencies, you can't proceed. If a dependency is brought in that hasn't been evaluated, the build should fail. You are using static analysis tools to scan the dependencies themselves, so the, the code base behind those dependencies, not only the dependencies for known vulnerabilities, but you're also using SaaS tools to analyze the code behind those vulnerabilities. Of course, if, you, if it's open source and if you can access the code. And you report findings to the authors. And you fail the build if a new dependency that hasn't been known is introduced. 